So you can see the mountains here. We're headed to Canaan, Connecticut. Robin Swamp. We're returning to Robin Swamp. Uh, we got some really good footprint evidence there from an anonymous person you could just see over here. Have a look forward to the right. That's what we're going into. Robin Swamp is the largest inland swamp in Connecticut, and swamps are often um, oftentimes associated with dogmen sightings. Dogmen have a thing with swamps and squash. We got what we believe to be some genuine squash footprint evidence at Robin Swamp. Uh, you can go to our page and see it there. We'll, we'll leave the uh, person that took the photograph will be mentioned. All reports are confidential, but the evidence is there and we're going to look for it. It's been a couple days now and we're finally able to get out there. We've been all over the state today and yesterday doing field investigations. Um, as you can see, we are in the heart of Squatchville over here. This is just dense, dense, dense forest and we have 9.5 miles to go till we get there and we'll see you at the at the entrance of this place and there's no facilities here this is pretty freaking rugged and uh, you just see mountainous it's as squatchy as anywhere anywhere this is it so let's go find some stuff is look at these mountains these are the foothills of the Berkshire mountains and Appalachian Trail is not too far away uh, Appalachian Trail has a lot of sightings this kind of this forest is going to stretch all the way up to uh, like Halls New York you know where the famous sightings are they have a Bigfoot festival there in September and you better believe we're going so long as it's still on Imagine a Bigfoot festival, everybody's going to stay six feet apart anyway. That's just the nature of, of uh, Squatch. But there we are. I mean, just to show you the mountains that we're heading to, 4.7 miles away from Sand Road. We'll see you out there. everyone uh, here we are at Robin Swamp it's um, Monday June 8th is it Monday June 8th it's 230 77 degrees blue sky and we are here at Robin Swamp following up on some great photographic evidence um, so thank you for that um, that was just we got a we got a footprint just awesome footprint so we're here that's the cornfield over here we're right at the junction of sand road and 126 in canaan connecticut hey be bear aware uh, this is as i said the largest inland swamp in connecticut and just the impression here there is a ton of birds and crickets and the smell the dense vegetation Let's just get in there and follow up on this investigation. All right, we're going. This is a hay field, so I might not be at the exact same place, um, but I went in here couple of years back and there's some ginormous tree stuff going on uh, structures just trees packed within trees and it was incredible like a huge deer stand let's go in a little ways check it out and if, if this isn't where we are we're still gonna check it out we're here at the swamp there's some other locations in the swamp but maybe we'll go back on up this way
when I mentioned before that there was gigantic trees um, up in a like a tree stand in a tree well this is the tree that had that and part of what's left of that is still tangled up in there but of course this tree has since fallen uh, that was the one it was right there I can still see remnants of the other logs mixed woods in with this tree. I'm not going in there. I was going to do a call tap. Um, but I, I don't know. That, that looks like Tick City. I don't really want to get ticks. I'm not looking for ticks. Um, the, the lime, you know, we talk about Plum Island on the coast of Connecticut doing biological research and Lyme disease being discovered in Old Lyme, Connecticut. Uh, and that Plum Island is right there. If you make landfall as a seagull right there, they didn't think cows could escape, and so ticks weren't a problem. But then they didn't, of course, the government didn't figure in seagulls, which can carry ticks, and that's what happened. Uh, experimental ticks are now out there. So I'm not going in there. Come on over here. We're looking for tracks. I don't see any here. this place this is what you get when you go off grid to some of these wildlife management areas instead of just your state park with its sandy little swimming area uh, this here is gorgeous you can see the deer tracks clear here all right so there are these deer tracks we're in this mud this is a great place to find tracks and all of a sudden we're coming upon these what appear to be canine tracks because I see claws in here and there's one here and there's one here okay to give you some idea of scale we're gonna put a lighter next to that okay there you go now we'll put it this way Now let's get the span of this. We're talking a four-legged creature, right? So the span of this thing is from here, one leg, to here, another leg, then to here, then to here. Okay, that's pretty crazy. That appears to be bipedal to me. I don't know about you, but that appears to be every bit one leg, two leg, one leg, two leg. That does not appear to be a four-legged animal. You got some more here. Those are unusual looking prints. They look canine to me. And that's not coyote. They're big. Get my lighter back. So here we are again at Robin Swamp and we're finding these massive tracks over here. Um, this appears to be, they're just sort of random, like they just, st something stopped here and had a lot of activity. Look at that, that track is that, that wide and it's almost circular. Uh, and then there's some smaller ones here and it's just clustered here we initially thought oh maybe it's horses well there's no horse crap and there's no other horse horse tracks 
they just sort of come here near this old tree they don't they sort of stop over there and stop just a little bit ahead here whatever it is there's some, some activity here I'm at a loss to say what it is quite frankly it's not moose prints heading in there horses wouldn't do that and then they stop this way let's see if they continue I don't know, they're just right here. It's very strange. There you have it. Strange prints at Robin Swamp. Moving on. All right, we're going to try some call taps here. I'm going to do one, and then we'll listen for a response. And then I'm going to do two, and listen for a response. And then after that, if we don't have a response, we'll try howling. This place is spooky. You agree, camera person? This place is real spooky. There is some construction activity over there, but that first call, I heard that. Yeah, it's just, if you like insects in your face, black flies and mosquitoes, then you want to visit Rob, Robin Swamp. It is funny, this is a real creepy place. Ever since I did that call tap and we're just right over here, I've been here and stuff. And if you look over here, I didn't even notice that. I walked by it at first. That is clearly a game trail coming off of there. And uh, there's, there's a lot of... Um, uh, ammunition casing here from Hunter, so this place is actively hunted, but uh, I don't know, it's creepy. I'm going to do a call, to, um, I'm going to do a howl. Whoop! seen us do this at other locations but when I did it here it, it felt like way oh, what am I doing this place is um this place in the squatch meter is like a solid five as far as Connecticut goes a DEP friend now it's called deep uh, but DEP at the time friend of mine he was an agent he was sent here so I asked him he's sent all over the place so I asked him if there was any place that he ever felt watched and he stopped and thought about it and he said Robin Swamp I got the distinct impression I was being watched 
and I turned, turned around and left. And he wouldn't mention much more about it. But there's almost like rustling noises in here. Now that could be deer, it could be any, it could be anything. But ever since that tap, I don't know. You can obviously hear the construction, heavy construction going on. Um, but we've talked about them being acclimated to human presence. Dogmen are often associated with farms, cattle farms, and um, swamps. And we have both of those here. And we found those canine footprints, which I'm at, at a loss to explain when there's no, or even where they step in their, their main path, right? Well, then you have double footprints. Those were singular footprints. And they were almost, I, I had trouble doing that expanse. So maybe we didn't see Bigfoot evidence. I have no other way to describe that other than bipedal canine. That's what we're here for anyway, right? Uh, this is not your tourist destination, but look at how beautiful this, this um, nitrogen fixing plant, which will be plowed in as a fertilizer. It's one of the few plants able to fix nitrogen and then they plow it in as a soil, or into the soil for a fertilizer. It's also beautiful. And like I said, if you like black flies, I was told I touched myself a lot and I shouldn't do that in COVID-19, but um, these bugs are awesome. If you like bugs in your face and mosquito bites and ticks and stuff, then you definitely want to visit this place. I would put that way up there. Yeah, if that's your thing, if you're some kind of crazy herpetologist and you just love insects, you see, check it out. Don't put any insect repellent on and check it out. Oh, we're squatching. We're going to go to another location here in Robin Swamp. Now we're not going to draw any conclusions on what we're seeing out here other than we are seeing a lot of very large, some triangular shaped prints, some round ones, almost like little elephants or something. I don't know. It's really, but then we found this one. And if you just follow my hand, you know, there you got there. And we would say that kind of does that big and then comes around. Yeah. I'm size 12. So that's a size 16. We're not drawing conclusions. We're just saying that's anomalous. All right, so we were at a field before at the junction of 126 and Sand Road. Uh, it's real noisy out here. We're at Area 3. You see it's very mountainous behind us. And we were on an open field. Now we're about to go in. We're in an entirely different area. We're about to go into what appears to be there are no trails. But when I really look, there is one trail here. And we're going to go check this place out. It's beautiful in there uh, other than this road. But let's just go. Let's just go in there and check out the beautiful Robin Swamp, uh, rarely visited. And again, if you like bugs, this is the place to go. They apparently don't care about insect repellent, do they, camera person? No, they don't. Swamps are good for that, you know. Fourth Manoa. And you need to pay attention where you're walking in here, so I put the camera down for now. All right, we're starting to walk inland in this Connecticut's largest inland swamp. And you see here we have fiddleheads. Um, most fiddleheads are edible, most. You wouldn't want to eat a cinnamon fern fiddlehead. Um, but these are the perfectly edible type. And there again, there's a food forage base. You're going to get some chlorophyll. That's important for a primate. And we'll move it out. Heard a, a sound here. A uh, camera person said dog. To me, it sounded every bit like a chimpanzee. I just did a call how. This part in here is way squatchier. Not that the other part wasn't. 
and I think we got some good potential dog man evidence. But we're moving on a little bit in here. We're gonna we're gonna take some photos of some really nice stuff that you see in this place, and hopefully they'll put it on their page because this place needs to be visited. There's a proposed trail. Make it. There's a lot of cars here, um, but this goes on. The, the, the hunter's trail ended and uh, there's no snow, so we are not going to proceed forward because this is a vast tract of land. And if you lose your way, even though you can clearly hear the road that way, it takes take you a while to get out. You won't get lost in Connecticut for days and days on end, so long as you just keep going straight. But we're gonna do some call taps. Just try it anyway, it's a little noisy from the road, but if you got a trail, if you guys on your page are proposing a trail, let's build one here because this is a really wild, cool area. I'm glad I came here. Definitely creepy in here. Um, we had a lot more, of course, that was a field, and this is forest, and then on this way is the wetlands, and uh, the mountains in the back over here. A lot of forage base, a lot of food. Robin Swamp is definitely cool and creepy, and we got some really nice footprint evidence ourselves, barring the one that was uh, shown to us. We were fairly close without being on the exact location because the corn has grown up now and we're not going to walk in the farmer's cornfield um, with just little seedlings growing because that'll get you shot in these kinds of areas so we're trying to avoid getting shot as well and hunters are here on location we'll see you at the next one field investigation number 110 from robin swamp